Hi, in this video I'm going to review the setups uh, related to dining reservations or one possibility of setups. Uh, and then uh, just go through uh, the process of making table reservations. So if we just start with the setups needed, uh, then in the main setup uh, uh, there is one setting related to table table reservations and this is if you want to integrate to LS hospitality meaning that LS activity will be the kind of availability engine for for table reservations and table reservation could use the web API etc and LS activity and these reservations would then f uh, go into the LS hospitality table management so if you are using LS, LS Hospitality Table Management, you would set integration here on. In this demo, I'm not going to show that that flow, so I'm just going to leave it as, as it is. Other, there are no other settings here related to table reservations. In, in locations, the only thing you have to be aware of if, if you are uh, having uh, integration to LS Hospitality, then uh, the store must be set assigned on the activity locations so it knows to which uh, restaurant basically the table reservation should go to and also you should set up the, the dining area profile if you're using those at the restaurant so uh, that uh, in LS hospitality you can have multiple profiles for example multiple uh, areas within a restaurant so this would then set up the uh, the profile which uh, for that integration uh, reservation types you would have to create a reservation type dining reservations and uh, most likely uh, the most likely you would want to have multiple clients within one reservation uh, you would want to show uh, multiple be able to book to multiple locations I uh, would set that on uh, we are normally only dealing with single dates when we have uh, table reservations and we want to see quantities which is the number of tables and we want to see number of persons as well so we have those set on uh, that would be the reservation type then on the activity types you need to create one uh, dining uh, uh, res uh, activity type for dining reservations uh, set the interval uh, in this case I've set it to 30 minutes uh, I want require client I want uh, to be required to assign a client to a dining appointment uh, posting item you have to assign that even though we don't normally post anything on dining reservations uh, since then we normally don't charge for those but you still have to have a posting item uh, day duration would be single day and then uh, this setting here is important table management integration you would set that to on if you if this is the table reservations that need to go then to the to the uh, hospitality uh, you could have multiple uh, types going uh, but uh, normally you just have one activity type that is table management and then we have a uh, simplified activity card or act reservation page so to speak uh, which uh, you can set up, set up here and this is uh, this is the id you would set up there and this would then uh, when you open up a, a table or a table reservation then uh, you get a page that is uh, very specific to two table reservations uh, so you would set this number here so this would be the only setting needed on the activity types. Uh, uh, the interval types, you would have the 30 minute interval if you're using those, you would set up those. And then we have a resource group. Resource group in table reservations would be uh, the dining tables because normally we would be reserving down to uh, table type. Uh, 
uh, that would be a very common setup where you have you know two persons tables four person tables eight person tables etc etc so you would define your what the possibility of table types you have and that would be the resource group and the resource group would normally have the type other and capacity based on fixed quantity because we would set up fixed quantities of how many tables we have of each each uh, uh, it's the type of table so quantity and activity that's going to be the quantity we want to keep track of that's the number of resources basically and uh, usage time would be just the, the start time we're just keeping track of the start time um, then uh, other settings here uh, basically nothing related to dining needed but in this case, I've set up a matrix uh, layout for dining, which is going to show me the resources for dining, the, basically the table types, and on these interval types. And we want it to see it from 11 to 8 o'clock in the matrix. So we'll go through that later on. So this would be the, set, the, the core settings needed. And then we would need to set up uh, the resources, which are the, basically the table types. So I've set up two resources here, a two persons table, and then I've set up four persons table as well. I've set fixed quantity to 20 of each of those. But if you take a look at uh, what else is needed uh, on the table, on the resource, you would uh, be able to set up fixed quantity, but but you can also set up day specific quantities. So, so basically, if you have different number of these table types per weekday or, or down to a specific date, you can change for a specific date or generally the capacity here. And one very important thing, uh, capabilities. Uh, when we start to set up the products, uh, which, which we need to, to for the appointments, then uh, we have to remember that we need on, on these uh, resources to make sure they are capable of, of actually being reserved for that particular product. Get back to that later on. So this would be the resources. So you create two, two persons table, four persons, etc., etc., for the resources. And when you've got that in place, then you just need products for the same thing. Because we are when we make appointments, we are booking products. So we have to make a product presenting the resource in this case. Uh, uh, and uh, so basically the only thing you need to do is just create a tape, uh, give it an, a, a unique ID. You have to have an activity type dining and we would then set up the, the uh, that we allow number of persons and we would want uh, resources required. We have to then require the resource type, which was the table type number per, in this case uh, a products uh, to reserve two persons table would re require the resource uh, two persons table basically this is only because in Alice activity when we book something we don't book directly the resource we we book a product and that product requires uh, a resource so we need this link uh, the product basically to be presenting the table the table types in this case uh, so we we do this on the both the products in this case the two persons table requires uh, the two persons resource and the four persons table also requires but the four persons uh, table type so basically we just created products to present uh, the resources so to speak uh, when that is in place we can start book our table reservations. So in this case, I have these products, which we talked about, two persons table or four persons table, or whatever the, your table types are. And when I select that table type, we can see uh, availability section here. It's going to show us the availability we have for each particle section or according to the intervals. So we have here uh, how many tables we have left for that particular table type. So if I click to four persons table, 
we also <coughs> we have um, a different availability for those. Uh, what happens next is now I can actually start to book uh, uh, reservations. So I just gonna select some date here on 20th, one o'clock, and hit new activity. And uh, as you remember, the product requires a client. That's why we get the list of clients. We can create a new client here as well, or just select someone from the list. And now we get the actual uh, activity uh, card or the reservation card for, in this case, for temporary reservations. So what's going on here in this uh, card is that we have the details of the of the reservation. So we have the product, which is the four persons uh, product, which is gonna, uh, if you remember, gonna reserve uh, the four persons table type automatically. This is the number of tables, this is the number of persons, the client details, the time and date, and then attributes. Attributes is any kind of additional information you would want to link to this reservation, and you can set those up, and that could be basically any kind of information. And then uh, here on the lower side, we see allocated tables. We haven't allocated anything yet, so it's just blank. And here on the right side, we have uh, more details, and we have also which tables, or how many basically tables we have of each availability, uh, or each resource type type or uh, or table type in this case. So basically, at this point, I could just hit OK, and uh, it would make the booking. So we see now we have 19 tables left of this uh, or four persons table. And if I just open up the reservation to take a look, another look. So when I hit the OK button, it actually automatically reserved uh, a four persons table here, as you can see in the allocated tables. Uh, I can also click here on tables and I could manually assign uh, more tables or multiple uh, table types to this uh, to this. Uh, uh, to this reservation. So, for example, if you have a large group and you, you would need uh, multiple uh, tables uh, for, for the, this uh, this particular reservation. But if it's a simple reservation which just uh, requires one table type, then uh, the product will automatically pick up that table type. Uh, on other th things we can then see the matrix so we have a matrix view uh, with availability as well so we're there you could just uh, see availability uh, per table type in this case two persons and four persons tables and I just see the availability for uh, for uh, each particular day and I can just book select a cell and book appointment from here if I need to as well um, so at this point you create the reservation and it would just go automatically to LS Hospitality Table Management if you have the integration turned on. But this concludes kind of the, uh, the overview of the, the table reservation part. Thank you.